So here she is, all nice and built. Had no real fit issues as I went along with this. So we're now entering into the spray stage. You know, we're really gonna be focusing on natural metal finishes and really, really focusing on pre-shading of uh, natural metal finishes. Now, when it comes to natural metal finishes, they are one of these paints that are very sort of unforgiving you know what's on the underside what's on the surface before you spray on that natural metal finish uh, really does show through um, and it can be as i say very unforgiving but at the same time it means you can take advantage of a lot of things as i'm going to go through this you will see that what you prime it and what you do this and what you do that it really brings it through I, uh, so much so that what i'm going to be using is um polished aluminium this is the um, ak interactives extreme metal um, ak481 um, and this is all i'm going to spray on top i'm just going to spray this on top and that's basically it for the natural metal finish colors because of what you can do with pre-shading so let's get started with this now um again you want to I've, I've already gone over this I've, you go really want to go go over make sure all those join lines um sanding scribing <clears throat> all done really really well because they will show through a lot a lot more fingerprints bits of dust right make sure you kind of get all that done now i've already pre i've already primed this our main color, put our main color down. Um, I know a lot of people will go black is an excellent color, but you know what? Between black and white, gray, light gray, medium gray, right? They all work well with natural metal finishes. Um, you know, don't just go boom, black is always a good one, right? So I've gone off and actually used um, this uh, 71110, the UK um, dark sea grey. I wanted to use something that wasn't black because I want to save black for some other areas because you can't go blacker than black, right? Um, but what we're going to do to start off with is we're going to do some kind of pre-shading, but strangely, we're going to go off and pre-shade it with a natural metal finish. So the first one we have here is AK476, which is steel. Um, it's just a little bit darker than our polished aluminium so it should show through but you've got to be careful what color you pick I mean if you copy my colors that's fine um, but really sort of do some testing before you actually kind of do some spraying because your pre-shading could like just come through so drastically that it ruins the model you've got to be careful you've got to make sure you've tested and picked the right color so because we're using these extreme metal paints they are um, enamel based so i'm going off and i'm using the extreme um, cleaner boy ak I, I, i've already cleaned my airbrush but i've used acrylic paints so i just want to make sure that my airbrush is you know thinking you know these sort of enamel based natural metal finishes all right so doing the usual sort of a bit of a gurgle all right and tip it upside down to make sure all the the bits don't go through the nozzle end and we can just spray some through so at least that airbrush now is thinking these kind of paints so let's just close that up we're going to pour some of this in here kitchen paper towels on standby because it's so so thin they just seem to go everywhere. So I'm gonna pour a nice amount in here. No need to do any thinning or anything like that, right? They're good to spray straight out of the bowl, but they are thin, so you wanna bring down your PSI, and we are gonna be getting in close. So make sure your PSI is, you know, fairly down, right? Maybe the 15 or below kind of mark. So if we just bring you in, right? This is kind of sort of our standard sort of pre-shading that we would normally always do. So I'm just shaking my flow, getting that biting point, that biting point where we just bring back the, the trigger and we just start getting paint out. That's that biting point. We want to hold that and move it along. So I'm just going to start to you now get my biting point. And when I get my biting point, when I get my biting point, there we go. We start moving along, following the recessed panel lines just as you would do with acrylic paints where we just nicely get that biting point and keep moving along. As you can see, it does not have to be neat. We can pass over the same area more than once, more than twice if you really want to. 
right maybe go over one area maybe once or lightly right all these things add to the different flavors so as you can see not being very neat there at all again you don't need to um, it adds to the flavor it's going to get knocked back right um, I've picked the right color so that I know it isn't going to come too far in your face um, but that is what we want to do there but because it's natural metal finishes I do like to actually go off and do a bit of uh, mottling as well so mottling again we get our biting points and we do all sorts of nice little squiggles all over the model you know I'm going over the panel lines as well I'm just absolutely sort of going everywhere you can sort of do big sort of big mottling where we sort of have big sort of patches or really tight ones you know really just go for something like that I'm going to do that all over the model and here she is she's all got that nice pre-shading what you'd kind of normally see when you see that kind of black pre-shade we do with normal spraying um, you know next up though again pre um, natural metal finishes are unforgiving but they're also can use that as an advantage and one of the thing is it's not just the colors but it's if you use gloss if you use matte if you use satin right it really can be a big deal but we can use that to our advantage which is what we're going to do here our tails here on these p51s they do seem to be a bit of a dull natural metal finish so what i've done is i've gone off and have sprayed a matte coat on our tail bit here but um as much as you might look at this and go oh this is um already matte what's the point in spraying this matte it, you know you've got to be careful you've got to make sure that it is matte right i mean we've used two colors here as much as our um, what is it our dark um, dark sea gray could be matte i mean we've just sprayed on our steel i mean that could be a bit shiny and that will really come through and make it look a bit off so i've made sure by nicely um, putting a matte coat on there we can then come out with our tamiya masking tape and we're going to mask this up all right really nice and easy one piece of 18 mil should do the trick and we'll just fold that over and there we go so that should all be nicely masked up now what we're going to do is i'm going to go off and spray the entire model with some of our intermediate gayuzi agent um, shining hands so this is again boy ak really good it's what we use for pretty much you know sealing it in for deckling and, and and all that kind of good stuff right but it's got a nice shine enhancer so it makes it a little bit more shiny so it's gonna um well it's it's not really for protecting our work this is for giving a shine so we have this dull um aluminium at the back here on the tail the rest of the model is going to have um, what basically what the gloss will do it will give it a bit of a mirror type look to the natural metal finish sort of thing it'll kind of have that sort of like you rotate it in the light and it changes its, its value in color right so again this is pretty sort of basic stuff so it is just the usual let's start off with that nice light misty coat just to get started right we could cut to air which should dry it pretty sort of quick right and we can come in with a normal um, coat which will just be you know you spray it on until it starts to look wet and then you move along right and we just want to do that all over the model don't forget all your little pieces as well um, and then we'll move on to the next glossy bit that I'll show you in a sec so our gloss now has nicely gone on and dried and we've got this difference between gloss and matte which should come through and give us a dull um, aluminium and give us a sort of a nice mirrored aluminium. So what we want to do now is we want to do a high gloss finish, right? This is what we've been saving the black for. The black gives us more of that sort of, um, sort of mirror kind of finish finish to it so um, I'm just getting out some masking tape and we're just gonna mask up um, these areas here because if you look at any p51s these areas here by the exhaust right they are really sort of super sort of shiny right so I'm just masking these up right just like I have done 
on the opposite side just there. I'm just going to come in with some plain simple black which is 71057, get them sprayed black. With that now splayed black, so as we kind of get this more deeper mirror finish, we're also going to come in and put on our gloss coat, right? However, a little bit differently, right? We're after now a dark, really, you know, high gloss finish. So I'll put my first coat on just there of our Intermediate Guzzi Agent. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to not do the usual what we've done on here, which is like about two or three coats. I'm going to do about four or five, maybe even six coats, just to try and get it as nice and as shiny as possible before we move along to get that nice high gloss finish. So after a good couple of coats, four or five coats of our gloss, we end up with this, you know, it's quite, quite shiny. Uh, now what you want to do for this next bit is make sure that this is dry. We put a lot of gloss coats on there. Um, it, it, we're, we're going to be rubbing at it and polishing it up. So, you know, it really does need to be dry or you're just going to start smearing it. So, you know, probably leave it overnight to dry. Uh, just to quickly show, whoops, the... Uh, canopy came off but at least it's coming off and not uh, going to be a problem at the end but anyway you want this sort of nice high gloss finish as you can see there it's like a, a mirror type gloss going on there and that's really going to give us that kind of mirror sort of natural metal finish at the end so to do this right these are good products here we have um tamia's polishing compound it is the fine and the finish right we're going to be using these two compounds they're actually um their polishing cloth as well is actually rather rather good so we're going to use these right and what we do um it's easy but it's kind of like shall we say a little bit tedious i mean i don't know about you but i I'd quite liked polishing my boots in the army so i don't mind doing this Right, but it's this, you know, taking your time and just nicely polishing away. Um, and what we simply do, I like to sort of dab it on all the way over, and then it's just good old, you know, just keep polishing in circles. Right, and with this stuff, what you want to do is just kind of keep polishing until it starts shining up. So as you can see now, it's looking a little bit um kind of buffed on you can sort of see that the um compound is on there but maybe if i just rub at this little bit for a little bit in circles you'll start to see how the compound slowly disappears and it really does start to go shiny right as you can see so i'm just rubbing at this little bit here you know, good to keep the masking tape on as well because um, we want that difference to be shown as well between the other panels. All right, so keep on rubbing at that. Maybe it does build up where the masking tape is, so maybe with the cloth then, and with your sort of nail underneath the cloth, we can just sort of maybe drag along those areas and sort of get rid of that little bit of compound that's sort of built up in the corners. Right, and you just want to keep on rubbing at it until basically all the compound looks like it has disappeared. Yeah, so that is basically then, as you can see, it really does shine up so so nicely. Then getting a nice clean part of the cloth, right? Nice clean part, right? We then buff it off, right? So we kind of buff off all that stuff. And then we end up with, you know, it really sort of nicely polishing up. But it's one of these, you know, the more you kind of go at it and you, you polish it up and make sure you're doing it sort of right and just keep going, you know, even if you come along with a second application, right, you know, it all helps and gets you that nice um, high gloss finish. Once you've done with our fine compound, right, the next compound is just to come along and do what I've just shown you but with the finish and the finish gives it that final sort of really really nice shine to it but it pays off to kind of spend the time and the effort just keep on you know polishing at it keep on buffing at it and you should end up with a quite a nice um you know high gloss finish which will really sort of come out when we put the main coat on 
in a bit, which we'll do in a bit, but I just want to quickly as well, just sort of, um, you know, just to mention that when it comes to natural metal finishes, as I've already stated, you know, it shows everything, right? So it is a good idea to, you know, in between any sort of coach you do, you know, whether it was the um, after the priming, the pre-shading, doing a bit of matte work, the gloss work, you know, just go over your model with cloths and just make sure they're just nice and clean. No fingerprint marks, no grease marks, no hairs, no bits of debris or whatever, because they will show up a little hair, a little bit of fleck of dust, right? It um, it really shows through. It's 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 probably because like natural metal finishes, they have this sort of thing where, especially this one, because of how we're going about it. When you sort of rotate the model in the light and you look at it at different angles, um, the value of the natural metal finish will sort of change um, to being sort of like maybe sort of lighter to darker and it kind of changes the colors as you sort of like move around it. So, you know, if you've got like a lump of a hair or something, it's gonna show that. So um, just a little tip there, just you know, before you kind of go off and do your gloss coats or whatever is the next color that we do, just, you know, make sure you kind of get it nice and clean because it will show through. So I'm gonna finish polishing up this and then we'll move on to actually spraying this, that one color, and you can see all the differences of what we've done for just putting one color on top. Now here comes the fun part. This is where we're gonna actually spray on our main color, right, all over, which is the polished aluminum AK481. Um, now, this has taken quite a lot of time and a lot of work to do all this, you know, all the um, pre-shading and the different colors, different glosses, mattes, high gloss finishes and all the stuff. Um, we want to, although these paints are really, really, really thin um, and they can be quite forgiving, just like when we do pre-shading, you know, let's thin down our paints. I'm actually going to thin them down at the start because, you know, we put a lot of work into this. I'd rather do like, you know, six coats on this if I have to because I've made this trans uh, more transparent and have less coverage, but I'd lo ro like to get it just, just right. So I've added a bit of our extreme cleaner. Yes, you can use it as a thinner. Well, I've been using it as a thinner. Uh, make sure you give these a good shape because it does sediment at the bottom. All right, and we're gonna pour some in, All right? And um, don't make the mistake I did once, All right? I know I've always got a brush that I use to um, mix it all together in the color cup, right? So get some of your, um, uh, what is it, the extreme cleaner and clean your brush with some of the extreme cleaner so as, you know, it's not got water on it or anything like that, you know, use, use a nice brush, clean brush for it, right? And then we can sort of mix this up and we know it's not gonna go all funny because we've got to put a paintbrush in there that's got like acrylics on it and water, right? I mean, I probably could do a bit more paint than that, but we'll see how we get on. So the way we go about this now is yes, as always, let's check our spray. Well, we're just going to do a nice, normal coat, right? So starting off with that, you know, misty coat where you sort of hardly see it go down. I just want to spray you know, most of this just to sort of show you, you know, the different effects. Um, so there's the first one. It will dry really quickly. You know, we've only put a misty coat down. Now we're going to put a proper normal coat down. So we are going to basically spray this on until it starts to look wet. All right, just all over. All right, as soon as it starts to look wet, move along oh, and we've just ran out so I'm gonna put some more in there but hopefully what you can start to see straight away is you start to see that pre-shading is just coming through right uh, and what you want to be doing is like I've just done you know nice sort of thin down coats and you build up in layers and you just keep going until you get that pre-shading just coming out to the right amount that you want. That's still too strong at the moment because we've only put one coat on, but you'll see our high gloss finish that we did here with the black literally completely and utterly 
changes that colour. Right, all we've done, we've used the same same colour on top, but it is completely different. And you kind of rotate it in the light, and it sort of has this mirror effect on it. Absolutely gorgeous when you get it like that. And you could just almost imagine um, doing a whole model on this. I mean, it almost gives it a really cool chrome effect to it. So I'm going to continue, um, you know, just building up these coats. Um, make sure they dry as well because they could be a bit misleading if they, they're a bit wet, you know, kind of spray on one coat, um, let it dry, see how it looks, you know, um, and then spray on another. But, you know, don't be afraid to go off and go, oh, you know, I'm really getting close to this pre-shading, almost getting killed off. Don't be afraid to go, do you know what, let's thin down the paint even more. You know, you thin down the paint even more, it gives you more control. Yes, it means you've got to do more coats because it hasn't got good coverage, but you have that control just to get that pre-shading coming through just the way you want it. So I'm going to get this all nicely covered. And now with all of this on, hopefully what you'll see, right, if I can just sort of show you the differences between matte and gloss, right, on our towel section here, hopefully what you can see is, you know, um, with it matte, it kind of looks dull, whereas when we gloss it, you know, it's got that bit of a mirrorness to it, so it makes it look uh, a little bit different, and that is just, again, Gloss matte really makes a difference. Again, we have um, this high gloss finish here and it's black and it really makes that difference. As you can see, you get this sort of mirror effect kind of chrominess going on with it. And then if we sort of like rotate this in the light because you know it does change color, you just see that bit of pre-shading just come through here and there, all that pre-shading we did, right? Um, admittedly, um, I've deliberately actually kind of gone light with it. I don't want that to come through. Personally, um, I don't like pre-shading that comes through so much that it's a bit too intense with natural metal finishes. I like to sort of hold back uh, when it comes to natural metal finish. Now, you're probably wondering why have I not gone off and sort of, you know, in the um, priming stage, sort of, you know, took a panel, you know, did a different colour, right before I kind of put this natural metal finish on top because then I would have had you know you have the you know the odd panel here is like an old one or a new one so it looks a slightly different color um, that's because in the next episode we're going to cover tinting but if you did want to go off and sort of you know change a panel here and there to look a slightly different natural metal finish you could go off and use different grays and or browns or or whatever in the um uh, priming stage to get those panels as you can see so easily to sort of change what color they come out um, using glosses mats you know you've learnt all that but what we want to do in the next episode is move along with things like tinting tinting these panels to make them look new old a bit blue uh, a bit rusty maybe um, as well as some final post shading and everything so hopefully you'll um, look forward to the next episode and we should have it finished as well in the next episode also fingers crossed um, but hopefully you've learned something there and hopefully you look forward um, to the next segment